Hi Church! Did you know that 20 years ago, SIBKL had its first ever service renting the hall in KDU? That's right, many of us didn't know that till we sat around the fire talking about this. But soon after that, we rented a place in Kapong before we settled into our permanent premise at Damansara Uptown. Now let's take a trip down memory lane and relieve some of the best memories from the first few years of SIBKL. SIB started with 15 people. Before the church started, we actually met in a house. There was like only uh, Pastor Chu, Pastor Lee Chu, uh, Bernard Chu, and then there, there was this Bi Chu, Pek Ho, Pek Lian, Helen, and then ourselves, and David Yi and Betty. These were the people who first congregated in a house to talk about starting SIB. We wanted to start a church because we want to help our BM brothers. There are a lot of uh, East Malaysians that came over from Sabah and Sarawak and they had no church to attend. During the early days, there is really nothing in the church in terms of appearance, in terms of uh, the name. There are so many big churches around, but we only have people around. There are good people and people who are really genuine. Just a few of us, we have to practically do everything ourselves, washing toilets, making sure that chairs are arranged, clean, that the ushers, the cleaners, we are probably everything. After the church service is over, all of us will go to one restaurant. Pastor Chu, Pastor Lee Chu will, will join us in family. And maybe that's why Pastor started the love for for Chakwekiao. <laughs> <laughs> you order two every time you go. You order two like plates. Two Who's it? Got chili? Extra large. I think, yeah, got chili and then two portions of Chakwekiao. But practically the whole church was uh, whole church uh, there. Yeah, in uh, Chaoya. My family and I first joined the church when it was uh, 30 people. Right, uh, and at the time, uh, SIB was in Uptown. I remember Uncle Bernard was leading worship and Auntie Lee Chu was actually playing the piano. Right, she was serving on the keyboards, you know, and really that, that was just how small the church was. We started Sunday school. We do not know what to do, we just got no materials, whatever, we just thought whatever we think was right for them. And I know the kids were very bored because they were running around everywhere. And we had to restrain them because they were in a room, they were making so much noise, they want to go out of the room. And once you go out, it's where all the congregation is. I live really, really far away in like Chiras, right? And so I had to take two buses uh, to ch church, lab, but I love church, right? And so uh, what happened was, I used to take one bus to Tongshin Hospital where Pastor Chiu was, was still working la, as a doctor there right? and we used to wait outside his clinic until he would finish all his, you know, all his uh, half day and everything and we would go together in the Proton car uh, to church right? and on the way to church, you know, I would talk to Pastor Chiu about movies and we used to share a laugh, you know, it was an amazing time la. Amazing, amazing time. Yeah, I think there's a prophecy given that this is going to be a church uh, for the young. As the day goes by, that's where you can see that um, Pastor Daniel comes and then you see uh, Lindy and the Ong sister come. Pastor Andy came last time. Whenever we had a Christmas play or a women's conference, you know, the numbers grew suddenly. People were just coming in. Um, it had very little to do with who we invite. It had a lot to do with God, and it taught us faith, you know. I searched high and low for a, for a place that would accommodate our services. Yeah, uh, We found a place in uh, Filio Damansara. I knew we couldn't afford it, so I told him, uh, to my friend, that the most that we could afford was probably 10,000 uh, a month, and even that would be a stretch. Anyway, he suggested to me, why don't I approach uh, Mr. C.P. Tan himself. Uh, the next morning, uh, I made an appointment and went to see him. And to my surprise, he said yes. And I almost fell off my chair. To fit out the building, we have people who donated uh, carpets. We have don people who donated all other things. For the chairs, every member gave to buy two chairs. At the time, we had about uh, nearly 200 people. Right? They wanted um, 400 chairs. So I was thinking, how much a chair? Ten dollars. I said, oh, that everyone must buy their own chair. Pastor Chu said that you must pray and ask God how many to buy because that's the number he will fill. So I went back and I looked at the, my list, wrote down, wrote it down, looked at the people, and really started to pray. 
and I thought, 10. I'm very sure I can bring 10. And within three months, really, the 10 will fit. Youth group was very, very crazy. Crazy in every sense of fun, crazy in terms of discipleship, crazy in terms of whatever we did. Uh, it was really all out. Lah. Atmosphere in those days, it was really nice. If pastor gave a sermon, we could shout answers from the crowd. You know? SIB is super blessed lah, that we have leaders and pastors who would say, OK, lah, let's take a gamble on this bunch of crazy people and see where it goes. Seeing more and more people serving God in yeah. different ministries and taking up new roles, especially the younger ones. I think I just like to see the church be able to go closer to God. 20 years now, <laughs> we will be probably grandparents. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Right. Hopefully, yeah. we will have passed something down to yeah. your and your passing down to the next generation. It would be wonderful if the church can just continue growing as it is. Yeah, I think it would. It would.